welcome back the director, Nora Shapiro. Um, I'd love to have my producer, Kelly Nathy, join me. And Lisa Blackstone, my editor. And of course, Tenzin Keicho. I guess we'll we'll just open it up straight to questions right here. You know, I was in the middle of making another film that had absolutely nothing to do with this, but um, the way the universe works sometimes, somebody that I intersected with on that project was writing a play and asked me what I thought about this as a possible documentary subject. And I said, are you kidding? <laughs> and um, little did I know that many, many years down the road, it would, it would get me here. But it, it struck a chord in me. Initially, it was the paradox between my notion of what Tibet was and what Tibetanness meant and my notion of what a beauty pageant meant. And then the rest went from there. No, that was news to all of us. Yeah. That was my third pageant that I had attended and covered, and I obviously had done a lot of research into the history of the pageant, and that was news to all of us. Yeah. Um, that's a good question. In in theory, they are. I think. Are they still doing the pageant? Yeah, I I mean he's, uh, Mr. Wangal has recently announced his intention. To do it, they have, they have done it since. There was a year that he took off. Um, the the exactly after this year, you guys can connect the dots. His his rationale for that year for holding off was in respect to the the seriousness of what was happening in Tibet, which is very true. The self immolations and and the increasing crisis of what's happening in Tibet, and and that is all true. Know. And then he did do it again. There was, was there only one? Mm. Only one? Right? Well, that's the second pageant. So, but, but, yeah, it continues. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah, I, it's really I think the universe meant me to do this. I had been working on the film for several years and then traveling halfway across the world to, to cover this. And then um, I attended an event. There was a little bit in the film of the ex-prime minister who was visiting um, all the Tibetan communities around the world um, when he was about to step down. And he came to the Twin Cities and I attended and I met a young man from the Minneapolis Tibetan community, which is the second largest Tibetan community in the United States, as it happens. And he said, well, you have to meet this young woman. She's about to compete in Miss Tibet North America, which will be in New York City. So it's very fitting that we're here premiering the film. And um, we met and uh, the, the film took a drastic left turn. Well, um, my first reaction to that whole, I mean, I want to call it a rumor not right now because we don't know the whole truth. So after hearing that, obviously I was heartbroken and upset just because I have um, pretty much given everything up for this pageant, you know. And um, so did my mom and my sisters. They came, they flew all the way around the world to be with me. And um, to see my mom cry just because I didn't win, I think that was the most difficult part for me. But after looking back, I mean, it's, it doesn't matter if I had the crown or not, just because it was one of my lifetime experience. Never in my life did I think that my first time going back to India after coming here would be 
to participate in this Tibet, to stand in front of a stage, you know, to glorify being Tibetan and being Tibetan women. So after getting over the whole, you know, upsetting roller coaster, mm -hmm. um, I was proud and, you know, I was happy for myself that I did what I did. Um, even though I didn't win, I think I walked away with a bigger uh, prize, um, being able to connect myself to the Tibetan world out there and trying to find a balance between being an American and being Tibetan. Um, so currently, I mean, being here, I think this is my contribution to the Tibetan community, um, showing our story, talking about our struggle, and just, you know, letting the world know that Tibet is alive and it will get its independence back. So that's the goal. And who knows, maybe down the road, I'll have more projects like this and more media coverage on Tibet. Thank you for sharing your story. No problem. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Um, well, wow, that's a big question. <laughs> My short answer to that is that that work is happening. Um, there is the international and regional and local levels of the Tibetan Women's Association, um, and they're doing remarkable work, including leadership training. Um, there are Students for Free Tibet, which is doing amazing political work and outreach all the time, innovative, tireless, fearless. Um, we're, what, 60 years out, and, and there are continued innovations, etc. Tireless commitment to this. There, um, in, yeah, the Regional Tibetan Youth Council, there are um, Tibetan arts and culture um, courses, institutions in Minneapolis, the Tibetan um, American Foundation in Minnesota is in the process of um, both hiring a new cultural director and building a larger center, they've outgrown their their current um, their current location. So that that is happening. I think that has to happen from within, and is happening from within the Tibetan community. Anybody want to add to that? Or we can hire you, Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for the long question, but no, it was great. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> www.mistibetbeautyexile.com, as well as the Facebook page, Miss Tibet Talk, and Twitter, and Instagram, and all the other good stuff. You can find us all over so social media. Also, we, you're, this you're is screening our tomorrow. And we're screening yes. tomorrow. Yes. We're screening it tomorrow. Um, what time? 11.15. Where? <laughs> right here. And uh, this is our, our world premiere, so we will, you know, hopefully have more screenings happening around the world. Yeah, that's a good question. Please, if, if you enjoyed the film, if you liked it, talk about it, tell your friends, tell your friends to come back tomorrow. It, we're screening at 11.15. Follow us, as Kelly said, on Facebook, Twitter. Um, helping us get the word out is the best thing at this point. This, this is our world premiere, and we're hoping to have a... Um, a long and exciting festival circuit and um, broadcast, um, international broadcast down the road, but we need help to get there. So, thank you. Good question. To my knowledge, the only thing that changed was whether or not the bathing suit round was open to the public or not. Everything else was always there. It became bigger and bigger spectacle and pageant, but this really was his brainchild. I mean, he is a showman, and he is a lot of things, um, but he is... Uh, has remarkable organizational capacity. And um, the reason that changed over the years had to do with attention and media attention spectacle, but um, that really is the only piece that changed over the year. Was the training It really was. I just wasn't um, there to witness it and document it until I was there with, with Keita. Well, thank you so much for being here and screening this